Calculations in the supersymmetry inversion model for the quarks. Um, I've I've maintained charge parity with positron electron pairs. So in the supersymmetry inversion model, the normalization of charge relates to either a plus one or a negative one. And I've kind of taken a little bit of a um I guess a connection back to yin yang plus minus kind of where there's a white dot and a black background and a black dot and a white background. So in a in a sense that the particle sphere is inverted on the other charged opposite background, um, giving the contrast of opposites, which gives a kind of field particle attribute. Um, and it overall has a, a kind of uh, a zero charge. So the idea is that if the up quark, up being positive normally in the supersymmetry inversion, it's actually opposite, so it's negative. And the down being, you were considered down on a mathematical cross X, Y, Z, um, being negative, well, in the supersymmetry inverted model, down is actually positive. So we have the neutron, two down quarks, one up quark. And so we have two pluses and a minus four of the up quark plus the positron, which is also uh, positive. So if we do the calculations, it's multiplication. Right, And the reason why it's multiplication in the supersymmetry inversion model is because the actual quarks form a mirror pair. So I like a particle-antiparticle pair of the up quark and the down quark. And then we have this quark down and positron. We're both a positive, so you'd say they'd be repelling each other, right? So like charges repel. But in the case when we do the mathematics, you can see um, where uh, negative times positive times positive, and that, that's equal to negative one. So now we have the three quarks multiplied together to give a negative charge. So the neutron in the supersymmetry inversion model is negatively charged. And then what happens is that the overall charge of the positron and the neutron is zero. So we have a zero state. And the same is true with the, you know, the proton with its two up quarks. If we multiply them together, what do we get? Mm -hmm. We get a plus one. And in this case, the electron negative one and the proton plus one, what we have is an overall zero state again. So in the supersymmetry inversion model, the, the stability of the atom is really dependent on maintaining zero state. And, and so that's the most stable state, and that's a state when the number of neutrons equals the number of protons, and the number of electrons equals the number of positrons. So we have a mirrored symmetry model in the supersymmetry inversion system, and that's really what's missing, right? And what's missing is the positrons in the atoms, and so we have orbital layers at the moment in the standard model of particle physics where we just have electrons. And what I'm saying is, well, with the supersymmetry inversion, with the charge parity calculations, we have to introduce the positron. And that's why the neutron is bigger than the proton. So the bigger mass equates to the positron. It's a bigger mass of the neutron 
there is a positron. And when we have electrons and positrons in the orbital layers of atoms, we're able to understand isotope physics. We're able to understand the geometry of electromagnetism operating within individual atoms. Not through measurement, but through an understanding of the foundations of geometry in atomic structure. And that gives both location and velocity of quantum particles. And that's something that quantum mechanics cannot offer. Like I apply this model to single atom physics. Single atoms occupy a special place in human biology and that relates to the atomic timing, the energy and the animate nature of living systems. So it gives a life force energy associated with atomic systems. And that's something that biology hasn't been able to integrate into our current existing models. And the reason for that is they have a foundation that doesn't have positrons in atoms. And so what I'm saying is if we correct the baryonic asymmetry of cosmology, we correct the idea of atomic structure and we refer to atomic structure in relation to cosmology to get that correction to occur. And that allows us to then understand cosmology from a different perspective, but also our own biology from a different perspective. The perspective of unstable atoms that have half-life timings and binding kinetic energies to give animate features of human biology.